Chris Reardon. Today's United Kingdom talk, Friday the 17th of June 2011. And a couple of people were asking me um, in Belushi's on Wednesday night, when do I record these shows? Because they seem to come out quite early in the morning. Do I, am I that dedicated? Am I that dedicated that I get up at seven o'clock in the morning and knock that show out so that it's ready and willing at nine or 10 o'clock in the morning? I cannot lie to you, boys and girls. I, I'm not a person who lies. I am not a person who lies. I actually record the shows the day before. So although I've just told you it's Friday the 17th of uh, June 2011, it is actually Thursday afternoon at, what is it, at 3.15, okay? So I always record the show the day before, so it's all ready, it's all ready, all right? Um, Ah, yes, I was mentioning, I was mentioning I was going to take the camera down and record some of our karaoke singers to, to show you. Uh, I've already done one. Her name is Anna, and I'm going to try and put that video on the next show, OK? So the next show you'll see, and she really is a very good singer. Um, lovely lady. Uh, she's got some beautiful daughters. And, do you know, they can all sing. They're like a family. A bit like the Jacksons. They can all sing. Wonderful. So hopefully on the next show, if I can get me act together, you'll see that uh, karaoke video from uh, my friend Anna, who comes and sings for us at Blue Shoes on Mondays and Tuesdays. All right. Now, I'm very pleased to say that Nick, our, our taxi driver, has sent his first story in, boys and girls, and he's, he's going to call this section of the show Tales from Betsy the Glamour Cab. I love it. I love it. By the way, Nick, I did notice in your, in a lot of your photos, your, I, I don't know how to say this with that, you know, I don't want it to hurt, but I noticed your hair follically challenged. Is that the right way to say it? <laughs> did it bother you, right, when, when you lost your hair? Because it bothers me, as you can see, you know, I mean, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't bother me that much that I won't show you. But it does bother me that the bit in the middle is disappearing. Now, this has been a very, very slow process. I mean, it really has. Uh, it's, it's not something that's happened overnight. Over the last, I mean, when I was 30, OK, I noticed that my hair was getting a bit thinner. Very, very slowly mine has gone. Other people's drop out sort of overnight, doesn't it? Did it bother you? When, when, you, when you lost most of your hair. I mean, are you completely bald or do you shave it or what? And does that bother you? Because it bothers me. How do you get around that? How do you see you've got your lovely wife, Fifi? That's it, Fifi. Galini Fiona is married to my first ever girlfriend. I can't believe it. How is the lovely Fiona? She used to be as tight as anything when I was going out with her. T oh, there was one occasion, I've got to tell you that she will die when, when I let you know this, Nick, OK? There was one occasion where she lent me 20 pence, OK? For, I think it was for a bus fare, right? And then every day after she'd lent me that 20 pence, she, she kept asking for it back. Terrible. And she's still as tight as that. Oh, she's, she's a bit with the old money. Do you know what I mean? Terrible. Anyway, <laughs> Nick sent his first uh, story in. Tales from Betsy the Glamour Cab. He says, hi again. Hope you received this without the necessity of wearing your thigh-length Wellington boots. How did you know I was into all that stuff? Has someone been talking? Anyway, um, I do not know where that rain came from this after this morning. Yeah, Thursday morning, it absolutely chucked it down. Certainly here in Berkshire. I was actually woken up by the rain. It was that the gutter wasn't coping and it was coming over the gutters. I do not know where the rain came from, but enjoyed it very much all the same. I digress. I know what you mean. It is nice to have a bit of rain. I mean, I must say, isn't it surprising how quickly the garden uh, becomes green again if you haven't watered it, you know, with the rain? As promised, here is one of my funny celebrity towers from Betsy the Glamour Cab. She's peacock green. Apparently, he's got a peacock green cab. That's funny because I, I had a peacock green, um, uh, what was it now? A golf, golf, uh, golf car, diesel it was. Oh, I'm going back a long time now, though. Poor. Let me think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. <laughs> I must be going back about 18 years. I had a, a I think it was actually race, a racing green golf. Nice car it was as well. 
Um, he goes on to say, one sunny afternoon, I was lucky enough to pick up a none than the oh-so-lovely Sharon Stone in his cab and her equally beautiful mother. They both looked and smelt absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah. You don't like all that women's perfume, do you? Oh, I can't bear it. Oh, bleh. Well, it makes me feel physically sick. Especially, you know, um, we had to share uh, changing rooms. When I was using um, the, the council swimming pool in Blackmore a couple of years ago, we had to share the showers. It's, it's like men and women in the same shows. I, don't, I could always smell these women-type perfume smells. It's just awful. Awful. I mean, what are they trying to cover up with all these smells? That's what you've got to be asking yourself. You know, it's like some of the, some of the puff, puffy boys I know. They're walking around, I mean, it smell like a tart's handbag when they walk past you. Do you know what a tart's handbag smells like? Well, just go up the dilly and have a smell around there. Oh, it's awful. Awful. Um, why do you spend... Girls, why are you spending all this money on perfumes and stuff? It's so expensive. You don't need it. You smell beautiful on your own. I'm sure you do. Not my sister, mind. You know, I mean, she needs a lot of... Let's be honest with things. She needs a lot of perfume. But most ladies, and certainly Fifi, you don't need all these perfumes, darling. You really don't. Um, Nick says, the smells actually made me hungry. Wait, would that be for food or... Oh, no, don't even go there. No. Uh, yes, I wanted to eat them. What, women? You want to eat women? Are you becoming a cannibal? That's not good wanting to eat people, you know. Very worrying, Nick. Their good looks were only surpassed... Oh, listen to what he, I mean, he know, as a matter of interest, Nick, are you quite known for charming women? Because according to this email here, you look like it. I bet you know all the right words to say and everything, didn't you? Their good looks were only surpassed by their warmth and charm. Regrettably, Shazza was wearing a trouser suit, so I was not treated to a basic instinct moment. Now, I haven't seen that film, so I'm not quite sure what you're going on about there. I'm sure other people were. I'm sure, I hope it's not rude. This is a family programme, Nick. I want this programme so that people, anyone of any age can watch it, dear. He says, but, 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 I did get a peck on the cheek. You didn't, did you? Oh, you crafty old man. <laughs> oh, OK, it was from Miss Stone Senior. But all the same, it put a big grin on my face. There we are. Towels from Betsy the Glamour Club. I have a feeling there's more to come. Keep those ones coming, Nick. We love all that. I, do you know, I get a peck on the cheek occasionally from some of the straight boys. In Belushi's, Absol I absolutely do. That's all it is, though. It's quite, all right, Chris, and you get, we'll see you later, you old puff. And I get, sometimes I even get my bum slapped. It's lovely, lovely. Unfortunately, it doesn't go any further, but there we are. I mean, you can't have everything, can you? The email address to this show is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right. Um, hello to James. Who writes, hi Chris, the sound seems more balanced now that you have corrected the problem. Yes, we're now recording on my little little gadget, you see, little recording gadget, rather than straight onto the camera. That has seemed to be what the sound problem was. As for the TV programme you mentioned, Camelot, yeah, I mentioned uh, that, I think it was on Monday's show. Well, Channel 4 should say it all. Since day one of transmission of the channel, they have created programmes that have swearing and sexual content or content that shocks people, although have toned it down somewhat, but there are still programmes that have the desire to shock people. Hope Katie the Cat is OK from James. Yeah, this is what I say, you know, well, I, I don't know. I mean, a programme like Camelot, I just didn't expect it to have swearing. And, I mean, the, the, the sex stuff was pretty strong, wasn't it? There was almost a rape scene uh, where I think the the girl, what was her name? Is it Morag? Morag, the one who thought she was going to become queen, and some other bloke with a beard. They were having a row, and he pushed her, uh, you know, towards a wall. And uh, you know, let's, let's just leave it there. And then it looked like it was going to be like a, a rape scene. And I just didn't. I really didn't expect that in Camelot. You know, I, I don't think people would have expected that. I wonder if they got any complaints over that. Yes, I know, it was after nine o'clock, I know that. But I, I just didn't expect it to be like that. 
Um, so thanks for that, James. Kate is very well. She's out in the kitchen at the moment, asleep on one of my bags. She likes to sleep on the Sainsbury's sort of um, uh, material. What's that? Is it Hessian? It's not Hessian, is it? You know, the cotton bags, the reusable bags. She likes to go to sleep on one of those at the moment. All right. Um, let's see. I think we'll have a... Just uh, just, uh, just one more, actually, and then we're up to time, aren't we? Uh, Michael, hello, Michael. Now, Michael, I've got to tell you, um, is a young lad. He used to come in the two brewers where I used to work on Sundays. I've, I've left there now. Um, I was going to talk, I'll talk about that in a future show, actually. Um, it was a place I've been on Sundays for 11 years, and I left there a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, a, a, another show that's for. I am still there Thursdays though. So Michael, if everyone that comes to the Two Brewers, come and see me on a Thursday, okay? We have a different show every, uh, I think it's the same show for four weeks, then it changes again. So always a pleasure to see you on a Thursday. And if you're still living in Kingston, Michael, you can always have your, you know, you have a lift home, dear, okay? I've got to tell you, boys and girls, Michael has been absolutely legless on occasions and I've had to literally have to, to scoop him up shove him in the back of the car and dump him outside his parents' house. <laughs> Do you know, there's actually a few people I've, <laughs> I've done that with. Some of the lads from Belushi's as well. The staff, the, there are various Belushi's all over London. In fact, all over um, Europe. And um, they like to drink in each other's bars. And if they travel to one, you know, sometimes at the end of the night, it, it's a... Oh, Chris, do you think you can give us a lift home? We'll give you some money. I said, no, just get in the car. Yeah. The only thing that worries me is one of them going to chuck up in the car because that's never very nice. I bet Nick, our cab driver, that's happened to you a few times, has it? People chucking up in the car. Oh, isn't it? Awful. Oh, and the smell. Oh, oh God. <laughs> anyway, Michael. Michael's never been sick in the car, ever. You did fall asleep once in that passenger seat. And I had to prod him to get him out of the car. Michael writes, look, I'm going to come to your karaoke and blow your socks off, babes. Are you a singer? You come and sing us a song. I love you. Thank you, Michael. You, I know you love me, but not like that, do you? I can't find anyone to love me like that. You know, it's all very well throwing around this love you business. But not like, you know, no one loves me like that. Why is that? Why am I on the shelf waiting? Incidentally, there's a picture of my mum and me on the back shelf, if you're wondering who that is. Um, hi, I want to mention on your talk show. So there you are, Michael. Next time I see you, try and keep it all together. But don't worry, if you do get completely legless and out of order, then I'll chuck you in the back of the car and drop you at your mum's ass in Kingston. Time to go, boys and girls. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Chris Reardon UK is my username, okay? YouTube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Hit the subscribe button on there. You will have to have an account with them, but that's all free as well. Email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And the audio show is also still available, boys and girls. We haven't stopped doing the audio version of the show. You can find that at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thanks for watching and listening. See you on the next show. Bye-bye now.